Hey everyone, thank you for joining me. I'm a guy called Joe and this is Bootstrapping Tools Let's Build, where we help scrappy bootstrappers just like yourself figure out how to overcome some of the hurdles that they're facing or figuring out how to make their operations more efficient. Now, before we dive into today's topic, make sure to check out our YouTube channel. We got lots of videos up there that go through all sorts of low code and no code solutions out there, including Retool, Airtable, Google Apps Scripts. We dive into a couple of APIs as well. But if you don't see an application that you're looking for, feel free to shoot an email over to feedback at bootstrapping.tools. We'll be happy to take a look at that application and possibly make a video just for you. Now, in today's topic, we're gonna to be talking about getting dynamic exchange rates into Google Sheets. This is really helpful if you're running a business that has sales or operations internationally, because you might be recording a bunch of information in one currency, but need to convert that over to whatever your primary currency is in order for you to do any types of tax documentation or financial reporting or whatever it might be. It's really helpful for you to get exchange rates dynamically. So you always have that updated conversion rate so when you're doing your reports, you're always presenting the correct value. Now, exchange rates don't really change, you know, by the second or the minute. Um, they could change hourly, I think, but typically it might be daily. Uh, but whatever the case, we're going to show you a way that you can import it from an API so that you can plop it into your spreadsheet and then use that across all your different reports. Now, um, without waiting anymore, let's go ahead and just dive right into it. All right, so up in the screen over here, what I have is a blank spreadsheet that we're going to use to actually populate it with the currency exchange rates. Uh, the source that we're going to use is going to be this website over here. It's called exchangerate.host, and it provides a free API for anybody who wants to connect to it and then use its services to convert currency or get uh, exchange rates as well as many other things that they do do, historical rates, time series data, fluctuation data, as well as VAT rates in the EU. Now, this is a free service, um, so make sure if you do like what you're doing, go ahead and just donate to them, buy them a coffee, spend like a dollar or two, or since they are European, spend a euro or two, just buy them a nice coffee, help them keep their shop running. But so the one that we're gonna use, we're gonna use the latest rates uh, endpoint over here, which is just this uh, endpoint, which is api.exchangerate.host slash latest. That's gonna get us all the data that we need. I'm gonna call this using uh, Google Apps Scripts, we're going to use the URL Fetch app in order to do that. So going back over to our Google Sheet, there's an option in your tools option, uh, which is called Script Editor. When you click on that, it's going to open up a brand new tab, which will take you over to the Script Editor. And then in here is where we're going to write our code. So it's going to start off with my function. We can actually just call this Get Latest Exchange Rates. And this is where we're going to actually post the uh, URL. So let's just declare a variable called URL. And then in here, let me actually make this a little bigger for everybody so you can see it. Var URL equals to that URL, uh, which is the exchange rate.host slash latest. And then within here, uh, we're gonna determine our headers, which actually isn't really that many because we're not making an authorization. There's no authentication that we have to do. So we're just gonna go ahead and say content type. We're gonna set that equal to application JSON because the results are going to be in JSON. We're also going to declare options as a variable here. And within there, we're gonna set our headers to it. I know a lot of people might say, why are you saying headers twice? Uh, it's just good practice in case, you know, you wanna keep separation of concerns because um, your headers might include a bunch of things that your options don't. But nonetheless, within here, we're also gonna do method, we're gonna do get. So now we're going to declare a variable called response. And then that response is going to be set equal to the URL fetch app. This is a library or a service that Google provides uh, to us that we can use in order to uh, make requests to two URLs and then fetch data back for it. So we're gonna use the fetch um, function over here. Then we're just gonna type in URL, which we already declared up top. Then we're gonna use options within there um, to get the information and just to provide the extra params. So here, before we're done, we actually need to also get context text. So that way it's gonna read the data back uh, and not just the response code and all that. And now we're also going to declare a variable called result. And we're gonna set that equal to json.parse the response. Now we're doing this because it's going to come back out as mostly just string, but we want to kind of convert that so that we can easily use the data that's within it. So before we go further, let's go ahead and just console log, not error, console log the result. So we can say result colon comma results to make the output nice and neat for us. 
So save that. We're going to display up top the function that we want to run. We're going to run this. And then our execution log is going to give us all the exchange rates that we need for every single value. So in here, uh, their, um, their response to us also includes a bunch of things, including a URL for us to donate. Um, of course, it is free. So if you do like them, please do. You can also get the date that it was last updated. And the base right now is Euro. So if we wanted to change that base, going back over to the documentation over here, there is a parameter that we can use in order to specify what our base um, currency is. So for us, I don't know what you might be using. Uh, I'm from the States. So for me, my base is going to be USD. So if we run that again, we're going to see in the output that now the base has been updated to USD and then all the rates that you get uh, back are based on that currency. And so we're going to take these rates and we're going to populate that over to our spreadsheet. So let's X out of this. And then now what we're going to do is we're going to say var SS, which is short for spreadsheet and just shorthand for it. We use the spreadsheet app, which is another library that Google provides to us to make it easier for us to interact with the Google Sheets uh, application. But then there, we're going to say get, get active spreadsheets. And then we're going to say get sheet by name. And we didn't actually rename it, so it's just sheet one. So let's go ahead and just say that. Uh, actually, before we do that, we're going to make this a new line and say var sheet equals ss dot get sheet by name, just the separation. So we're not doing it all in one line. So within that sheet, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to say our destination range equals sheet dot get range. I'm going to say one, one. And what this function does is it um, targets the exact range that you want to start populating data or get data from. So the first one is the starting row and then it's the starting column. So one, one means a one. Uh, if you're used to the a one notation in Excel, a one is the top uppermost left cell. It's the starting cell. And then now the, uh, the number of rows is the third. And then the fourth parameter that you pass here is the number of columns. So what this is going to be is it's going to be the result dot length. And then after that, it's going to be result zero dot length. And we do result zero dot length because the data that we're getting back is going to be in a bit of a, uh, a grid format. So we want to just make sure that we're dynamically setting the range according to how big our data structure is. So let's actually go ahead and just comment this out for now because we want to receive what the results are looking like again. But what we're going to do instead is we're going to say, uh, we're, we're going to change the result into just the currency code so that we don't get all that extra information about the base and the data and all that. So let's run this one more time. Let's see what the data looks like. So actually, they review the permissions and Google will sometimes do this to you if you're um, asking for additional services. So because we asked for the spreadsheet, that, uh, the spreadsheet app service, it's going to ask you just to re-authenticate. So once you do that, you're going to get the results back and rates is the endpoint or the variable that we want to get. So within our results over here, json.parse response, we're going to say dot rates. And then, so when we run this again, we should see that the result is just the rates information. So as we can see here, these are all the results we want and it's actually in an object. So this is where it gets a little bit tricky. We can't just say um, results.length because uh, we actually need to convert this into an array. So let's actually X this part first and then let's dive into making this into an array. The way that we're gonna convert this into array is by using what is known as an object and that's gonna allow us to take just the information that we want from it. So over here, what we're going to do is we're going to say bar rates equals to object dot entries. And then we're going to pass through a result in there. So it's actually before we go any further, let's go ahead and console log our rates just to see what that looks like. Let's go ahead and run that. Now we're going to see a nice little array of all of the information that we're looking for. And for each one, it's going to be position zero, 
or the first position and then the second position is the rate so currency code and then the rate so now that we have that we're going to update our destination range over here so then instead of results dot length it's going to be rates dot length and then rates zero dot length and now we're going to say set values with an s rates so once we run this what we expect to happen is that within our spreadsheet over here starting from cell a1 it's going to just populate all the way down all the different codes as well as the currency rate itself i'm going to run this and going back over spreadsheet you now see all the different currency codes as well as the respective rates based on the base that we're using uh, in our api call so if you want to make this a little bit better a little bit fancier uh, you can start adding headers and stuff into it but that's really just up to what you need to do Otherwise, you can have a trigger set over here now, which will just let you run this maybe once a day or something like that. You can do time driven, you can do it by hours, days, or weeks, or whatever you want. Set the time for it to run. And then once you save this, every day automatically it's going to hit that API and then populate the data into this spreadsheet so that you can use that for whatever reports that you're looking to use. But that's it for this video. If you did run into any issues, feel free to drop a comment in the section below. Uh, if you had a problem, most likely somebody else had a problem. So don't be shy, be the first one, and then we'll be able to answer your question, help you out through that, as well as everybody else uh, who's looking to improve their reports by having dynamic exchange rates. Of course, if you did like the video, make sure to hit that like button the best way to support this channel and help us continue making content for you it also helps uh, our videos show up in the search results for you as well as many other scrappy bootstrappers out there who are looking to improve their operations and scale their business without scaling headcount now got lots of videos coming up so make sure to hit that subscribe button and also the bell so that you get notified when we release the next video but i'm a guy called joe this is bootstrapping tools let's build it's been a pleasure and we're out.